This episode is brought to you by Marvel Studios Echo. All episodes streaming January 9th, only on Hulu and Disney+. Plus. Rated TVMALV. Viewer discretion advised. Maya Lopez has betrayed her mentor, the notorious Kingpin. Now on the run, she returns to her hometown to prepare for the biggest fight of her life. Don't miss Marvel Studios' hardest-hitting series yet. An epic five-episode event. Marvel Studios Echo. All episodes streaming January 9th, only on Hulu and Disney+. Plus. Join me, 48 Hours correspondent Erin Moriarty, on my podcast, My Life of Crime, as I take on true crime investigations like no other. This season, I'm looking into the labyrinth of crime and secrets within families. I'm cutting straight to the evidence and talking to the people directly involved, including investigators and the families of victims. Listen to My Life of Crime with Erin Moriarty wherever you get your podcasts. I'm April. And I'm Caroline. And this, this is your bloody happy hour. Caroline, are you ready for this? This is your newest guilty pleasure. It's the bloodiest part of your week. Did we say something about it also being happy hour? Showed sure in. Because we're about to be sipping on some murder. Bloody happy hour. Hey y'all, this is April. This is Caroline. It's this bloody happy hour, Thirsty Thursday. Thirsty Thursday, your favorite day of the week. Hopefully so. Um, We have some reviews to read, but first we want to shout out South Town Supply Company. Um, We talked about them on our Tuesday episode. If you haven't heard that, stop right here and go back and listen to Tuesday's episode. Caroline brought us some good news. The knowledge. If you watch this on YouTube, me and Caroline have on the same hoodie. And it just says Waco on there. It's very vintage looking. um, And it's very comfortable. But most of all, these are made by high school kids. They are local Waco high school kids who are interested in different programs. And so they work with a nonprofit company called Triple Win with Rogue Media and they have developed their own business, Caroline. I love it. Southtown Supply Company. They're on Instagram. Go and like them now. It's actually called Southtown Waco on Instagram. But these candles right here, they come in mason jars. They burn perfectly and evenly. I've been burning them in the evening at home. You check out these, what are these called? Coasters. Coasters. Um, they are real wood. Sanded perfectly, stained perfectly with their logo. Logo. This cutting board. Oh, this I'm fine. one's a pretty walnut flavor. Flavor. Walnut. <laughs> what is this? Can you stain? eat cutting board? <laughs> walnut stain. They make those T-shirts and a ton of other things. So we're gonna be just highlighting some of their expertise. And if you're interested in purchasing any of these, this hoodie. Some cutting boards, some candles, some coasters. There's even cool little chalkboards that they make that we'll have another episode. You can go to their Instagram and you can message them. Or you can email Mike at roadmedianetwork.com and support these kids that are already working on their trade for after high school. It's pretty good. Yeah. pretty good stuff. Really good. I was not doing this in high school at all. Mm. Just doing other things. No, I was busy. A little busy. Okay. Caroline, let's read some reviews. Okay. It's been a little bit. It has. So, this is from, this is just titled, Great Podcast. It's from um, Josefa Hernandez. J-O-S-A-F-A. I'm thinking that's Josefa Hernandez. And it says, listening on the way back to home, shout out to Matt Dixon for putting me on. Yay. Matt Dixon, number one fan, brought us a new fan. Thank you, Matt. And thank you, Josepa Hernandez. Okay, I love it. This one's called Love, and it's by Undrawer. Oh. Okay. Uh, I listen to a lot of true crime podcasts on a regular basis, and this is my new 
favorite. One of my new favorites. Y'all are funny. I especially love Caroline's tangents. <laughs> Those things. I particularly enjoy the local stories because I can take, I can picture the places in Waco and DFW as you talk about them. Keep doing your thing. I look forward to listening to each week. Love y'all. Thank you, Undrawer. Thank you, Undrawer. This is from Ratchet Robin. Oh, gosh. It's titled, Karen's Pissing Me Off. <laughs> These other listeners need to settle down. Your side stories are what make your podcast hilarious. As long as they're not super long, keep them in. Also, since they pointed out how much you say like, Caroline, I'm more away, and you say it a lot, which never bothered me before Karen pointed it out. Karen being your mom, remember? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but now it does. So anyways, y'all rock just the way God made you. Keep doing you, booze. Robin, this is Robin who knows all things cows and horses. <laughs> we said something about her. At a I know, <laughs> but I don't remember saying like all the time. And you know what? I'm going to say it more just for this episode. This one is Two Hearts, and it's by Anz, Anzel56. I don't know. Uh, I listen to a lot of podcasts and just love April and Caroline's Bloody Happy Hour podcast the most. Thank you, Anzel. This is from Nick Schwab. Nick Schwab. Nick Schwab. Oh. Ladies, please. Oh. <laughs> Three star. Did I miss this one? I think this is new. <laughs> we didn't we did look Aside at this one. from not always having smaller facts, basic facts correct, there's also the need to talk over or interrupt each other, mostly Caroline, I believe, definitely takes away from the flow of the story and gets annoying after a couple episodes. Nick Schwab. Caroline's real ADHD. Nick Schwab. <laughs> I understand. When I listen to people, I don't want them interrupting. But sometimes I do. So, I mean, it is what it is. I did not see that at all. Okay. And then the. But thank you for your review. Yes. Keep we them coming. Take that and fix it. But what is it saying? That I interrupt while you're telling the story or you interrupt while I'm telling the story? It's saying that we over that we over other talk over talk and interrupt mostly Caroline I believe I'm the interrupter yes okay <laughs> go last one oh there's another one yes oh gosh oh uh, this one's called I'm loving uh J Tal yes I'm loving it J Tal seventy. Uh, I listen to podcasts on the treadmill at five a.m. I anxiously await Tuesdays and Thursdays to. Listen to the latest episode. Nothing like starting the day with a little murder. April and Caroline always keep it entertaining and interesting. I love the dirty Chad side stories and the clinking of the ice. Keep it up, ladies. Thank you, J-Tow. All right. So, keep them coming. Yes, we're caught up. And you can send us the good and the bad. Because we've really tried to work on all the ones that, all oh, the opportunities. Yeah. No, it's great. Okay, so we're going to Mississippi. Hey, let me take off my sweatshirts. My ears are getting red. Do you remember being young and saying, am I crooked letter, crooked letter, I, crooked letter, crooked letter, I, humpback, humpback, I, no. when learning how to spell Mississippi? No, never. <laughs> I've never. I've never heard that, ever. Never? No. Crooked letter? Is it S. Am I crooked letter, oh. crooked letter, I, crooked letter, crooked letter, I, humpback, humpback, I. The humpback is the P. That's way too much of a song to <laughs> try to spell a word. Obviously, my childhood, I learned a lot of songs when learning things. I the know. New, I didn't get any. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to Mississippi. In I a got town, a monkey on my screen. I don't know. Okay. In a town called Cortland. So this story was suggested by... My brother's now fiance, she is from Mississippi and near this area. So this was a big murder in their town. Okay. So we're going to talk about the disturbing murder of Jessica Chan. Oh! Yes, yes, bro, yes, yes. this is bad. This has been on my list for a while. This is a good one. Um, And... I was going to do a whole nother story earlier this week, and then we didn't record, so then I switched it up last minute. Uh, it's the worst. I know. I, it, the struggle is real. But the story needed to be told. So 
This town, Cortland, Mississippi, is a very small town. Population is like 500, and everybody in this town knows everybody. Mm -hmm. um, Jessica Chambers is 19 years old at this time. We're going to 2014. Um, her parents are Ben and Lisa Chambers. They were divorced at a young age, but they co-parented very well. They lived only a couple houses down from each other. Um, they would have family dinners all the time. Like, it was the best situation for divorced parents, right, for Jessica. Um, in high school, she was a popular girl. She was a cheerleader. She was well-liked. Uh, she was going to become a nurse. And that was her dream because she wanted to help people. But on Saturday, December 6, 2014, she would never get the opportunity to make her dream come true of becoming a nurse. Because... Mm. Of what I'm about to tell you right now. It's December 6, 2014. It's 8 p.m. And two men were driving down a dark road. And this road is Heron Road, I believe it was pronounced. And they just happened to see a car engulfed in flames. Oh. On the side of the road, on fire. And, of course, they call 911. What do you do? I mean, that's all you can do. You call 911. I mean, I yeah. stick around. Not oh, everybody yeah. has a fire extinguisher in their truck. No. Sweep he does, so he would be able to put Oh, it I would I mean I would call. What else are you supposed mm. to do? Go they call nine one one. Find a water bucket? That's not gonna help. No, it's not. The firefighters come and they look in the car and there's nobody in the car. But when they look up, they see what looks like a zombie on flames walking to them oh. with their hands out with hands out and they're all just like stumped and shocked for a minute. And then they soon realize it's a young woman because they see burned blonde mm -hmm. fringed hair. Oh. So oh. it's not a zombie. It's a young girl and she had been burned. Her skin was melting away. Her hair was burned. She had nothing on but her underwear and she could barely speak, but she was able to whisper her name, she said Jessica Tab Tabers, but they soon realized it was Jessica Chambers. And remember, this is a small town, so everybody knows everybody. So then Jessica said, he set me on fire. He did it. So the firefighter later says, who, that, who? Yeah, he was like, who did this to you, baby girl? Who did this to you? And they... Some of the firefighters, and there's a lot of them there, distinctly hear Eric or Derek. Okay? Okay. But others were not sure what she said. So that's going to kind of come up, mm -hmm. come back and forth throughout the story. Cole is one of the firefighters, and he knew her well. And um, him and a lot of the other firefighters had PTSD after this. Because it was the worst thing. Do I say it right? PTSD mm -hmm. after this. Um, worst thing that they've seen. Plus they knew her. Some of them could not. They like quit after that. Like oh, they could yeah. not be a firefighter again. He got a blanket. And, and like and like took off his own jacket to cover her up. Um, because she was so exposed. And he was like I wanted to preserve whatever dignity that she had left. Ugh. He is one that said that he did not hear a Derek or Eric. He heard her asking for water, but they couldn't give her water. No, you can't. Um, she had deep thermal burns, and they could tell a flammable liquid had been tore, poured down her throat and up her nose. So it's like, did somebody hold her down and like pour the liquid on her? Was it like a torture type thing? Those this are the things I was thinking awful. about. Oh, it's awful. Look at it. So over 90% of her body was burned. So, of course, they rushed her to the hospital, right? Over 90% of her body was burned, and there was no coming from back, back from this. She was in excruciating pain. The police call the dad because the dad is actually a mechanic for the sheriff department there. Mm. And um, stepmom runs down to mom's house bangs on the door and says Jessica has been burned and she'd they, been blown up she had been a lot more than burned she'd been literally like set on fire and blown up so 
When they get there, the doctors tell her there's nothing they can do but make her comfortable. So Jessica Ugh. stood around, s- stuck around long enough to say goodbye. Her dad was able to say goodbye to her, her cousins, her stepmom. Um, and then when her mom went in there, her mom saw her and told her, this will put a lump in your throat. <clears throat> if you're in too much pain, it's okay to let go. It's okay. I will get you justice, is what her mom told her. And then Jessica took her last <gasps> breath at 2.37 a.m. that morning. Oh, God. I can't. And it was like, her mom later said it was like waiting f- her, like she was waiting for her mom to get there. Yeah. It was okay. Oh, my God. That's so. Ugh, I know. 19 that? years old. So later that day, a man was walking down the Heron Road. Um, and it was about an eighth of a mile from where the car was, which you know it's a small town. Mm-hmm. People know where the car was. You could probably still see the flames there. Um, he found a set of car keys, and he was like, I wonder if these belonged to Jessica, Jessica. Chambers' car. Yeah. So he took those to the police department, and I will tell you that this story is not going to piss you off. Oh, like the police department – you know, a lot of times we'll do these stories, especially oh, small yeah. town, and they like act like they've had no training. They are DTF. Yeah. Down to find in this one. So they take these keys and they immediately send them off for DNA samples. And they, when they clean up the crime scene, they find her phone. It was kind of under the car, like it maybe fallen out and not inside mm-hmm. of the car, but it was still very, very hot and burned, but just not totally ruined. They got a search warrant for her phone records, but I guess search warrants are really sketchy to where she, they were only granted records for 24 hours before her death instead of like going back further. Real weird. I know. I don't know. And they were only able to get phone numbers and they were only able to, um, or like the name. So they weren't really able to get like text messages and stuff. They find a message from her friend Keisha, mm-hmm. and Keisha's her best friend, and Keisha says that Jessica picked her up at 1030, and she and her, she, Jessica, and a guy named Quentin Tellis were in the car. They went to go smoke. They stopped at the store, the m M&M store, which is like the only store there, so it's like a hangout, too. People go there to meet. They go there to get gas. They go there to get their snacks. Mm-hmm. Um, and they drove around for about an hour, probably smoking, mm-hmm. right? And then she dropped them back off, and they stopped at the store one more time. She dropped them back off, and then Jessica came home, okay? So cameras checked out their story. Three of them were there. And that was really it. Like, they didn't really ask Keisha much, any more questions at that time. They questioned Quentin, and Quentin said the same thing. Quentin did have a record, but it was no violent crimes. It was like a burglary. So they were like, okay, you know, we'll just keep this over here in our back pocket. Yeah. Um, Her phone GPS showed that about 5 in the evening – her phone records showed that she got a phone call at five in the evening. Mm-hmm. Um, and her mom told her, said that she was at home. She had woke up from a nap. She told her mom that she was going to go get something to eat and then go wash her car and that she'll be back. So she went to a town called Batesville, which is like five minutes down the road. Um, she was back in Cortland by 630. At 6.48, she called her mom, and her mom said that this was a different phone call. Her mom said that usually there's, like, music in the background or, like, people talking. It was just real quiet and real short. And that was the phone, last phone call she would make, make. from her phone. Yeah, from her phone. Um, at 7.30, she... Her phone picked up at Heron Road, and there was the signal went away at eight o four p.m. because they think that the That's when fire, uh huh, yeah, like got to the phone and so yeah. it lost the signal. And then that's then the the nine one one caller phone call came in. Yeah. So 
they heard the story of the Derek and Eric. And so this sheriff department, they're DTF. And they're like, we're going to interview every Eric and every Derek. Every one of them. In Cortland and surrounding cities, anywhere near, anybody that's in their phone. And um, they're like, we're going to cross check their cell phone locations with Jessica's locations on the day to make sh- to see if there are any similarities, and um, bad day to be named Derek or Eric. It can you imagine? <laughs> can you imagine? Now Jessica Chambers is this pretty blonde hair, blue eyed girl. Yeah, she's super um, cute. And so the town knew her, and so they are really looking into her. And I have one source that says by this time the FBI, the ATF, and the U.S. Marshals were working on this sh- with the sheriff department on this case. So maybe that's why they were so efficient. They had so much help as well. So nothing came of the Derek and Eric searches. Like there was nothing questionable. None of their locations were mm-hmm. with Jessica at the time. And so they were like, uh, w- let's just go back to the cell phone. There has to be something on the cell phone. So they get a better search warrant, and now they're able to see the messages. So before, they were only able oh. to see phone numbers yeah. so they could find who, but they weren't able to see text messages. And they found one text that came into Jessica's phone just minutes before the 911 call. And the text said, can't hang out tonight. I got a friend coming home. Sweet dreams, Bay. This text message is from Quentin Tillis, who was the one that was in the car when they went to the M- M&M store. Yeah, when they went to m M&M store. So they had already interviewed him, but he had never mentioning that they were going to have plans that night, right? Because if my if me and you have plans and mm. you die, the police question me, I would be like. We were supposed to have drinks. Yeah. But I had to cancel because of whatever. Right? I would put that in there, I would think. And um, so they go and they re-interview Quentin because Quentin didn't really tell them anything. And he revealed that they did have a different relationship because the word bae was in there. Mm-hmm. So they were like, what is your relationship with Jessica? Yeah. Why aren't you telling us? And he was like, well, and we And this guy was, sex. did he go to school? Where did they go to school together? Or no, no. Well, he was just. I think he's from Louisiana, actually. So he, was he was just, just in town. There. No, oh, he, he was living there. there. Okay. Yeah. Um, and he so he said what? So he said he revealed that they had slept together one time in her car, and they asked him to just des- to describe what happened and where they were, and they said that he, they were at his mom's house, and his mom lives right across the street from the M and M store. They were parked in her driveway and that they had laid the seat down and that's where they had had sex. One of the Do they need to like a visual of it? Yeah. Okay. They asked a visual. They wanted to be (laughs) they need all the details? (laughs) Yes. Okay. And now a word from our sponsors. Nine one one, what's your emergency? Do you hear that? It's coming from the house. It's coming from inside the house? Uh, do you mean, could it be? The, the Bolter House. New from Rogue Media, two haunted hotties talking about haunted places. Every episode, we dive deep into the darkest places and give you a bit of history. We're getting spooky in all the right places. You've gobbled your last ghoul. Follow along for the craziest and spookiest stories with Debbie's Dark Tourism. The Stanley Hotel, Winchester House, The Alamo, Hotel Monte Vista, and more spooky places. Find us at the underscore Poltergals. P-O-L-T-E-R-G-A-L-S. Look over your shoulder. It's us, the Poltergals. Wherever you consume the podcast, you can find us there. Um, 
What are we doing here, Rusty? What are we going to do? Uh, yep, we're doing the uh, King of the Hill Rewatch Podcast. King of the Hill yes, Rewatch Podcast. Yeah, so we're going to go through one episode at a time. Uh, come along for the ride with us. Come check it out. And uh, give me give me a good um, like Dale Gribble quote to go out on. Wingo! Yeah, Wingo. <laughs> Wingo. Wingo. All right. Well, join us. Uh, join us for uh, the uh, King of the Hill rewatch podcast. Leave in the heart of Texas. That drinks his brew and he spits his chew. Leave in the heart of Texas. The TV players, but no one cares. Leave in the heart of Texas. Here we go. Welcome to One Star Rewind, a new podcast about those dreaded one-star reviews that every business owner hates to receive, but yet every customer loves to read. During this podcast, we will peel back that one-star review to better understand how it happened, when it happened, and what the business owner is doing after receiving that one-star review. This podcast will be about love, hate, and laughter. On One Star Rewind, we will meet with real business owners who will tell their stories and how they do rely on reviews for their business. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or download us at roguemedianetwork.com. Please subscribe, but only rate and review for not a one-star review. Join us each time for a new review and a new story. So, um, then they were like, okay, well, what did you do after you and Jessica got high and she dropped you off that day? And so Quentin's story was, well, I hung out with friends and I went to my sister's house. I drove to Batesville, mm -hmm. which Jessica was in Batesville at some point that day too, um, and I went to Fred's dollar store because I needed to get a green dot card, which is like if you a don't money have a credit card? card, yeah, like a money card, green dot card because his girlfriend was coming to visit him and he was buying her a bus ticket with that green dot card. Mm -hmm. So he took his sister's truck back and then he said he came back to Cortland, went by the M&M store and then went home and waited for his girlfriend to come visit him in town. He's not cute. He is not cute. He's very ugly. So he, they checked out his story, and it was right. He was at Fred's Dollar Store at 8.15 p.m. after the 911 car. He was also on camera at the M&M store, and they also saw him in his sister's truck at his mom's house or whatever. Okay, so he's speaking the truth. So speaking the truth. So then they move on. And they were like, well, Quentin, do you know of anybody named Derek or Eric that, you know, might know? Oh, my cousin Derek Eric. <laughs> that might know, have known Jessica? And Quentin was like, yeah, I know Derek Holmes. They had beef, actually. And so oh. they were like, oh, Derek? Okay. okay. They looked at Derek's record, and Derek was a sex offender. Oh, hell, here we go. So they went and they talked to Derek. And they were like, where were you on December 6th? And Derek was like, I was at home with my mama. I was massaging her feet. <laughs> <laughs> no lie. Okay. That's what I do every evening. Okay, at dirty so Chad. So. My mom is diabetic and I have to massage her feet every night because of all swelling and all this other stuff or whatever. Okay. So that's a little odd. They cross his cell phone records and mm. they talk to his mom and the alibi stuff. Oh. She was like, oh, yeah, he was rubbing my feet. Rubbing my feet at this time. And and so cell phone records also placed him at his mom's house. So now it's like a year later. Nothing has happened. They have no suspects. Um, What's his name? Quentin has moved off. Mm -hmm. And he is now in Louisiana. And the community is pissed, right? They have armchair investigators because this is 2014. So oh, yeah, like the sleuths media, are out. 
sleuths are out. Web sleuths probably is where they. They're throwing out all their scenarios, and there's a fifty-four thousand dollar reward for her death. So people are trying to solve this, right? One scenario is her ex boyfriend Travis, who is a black guy. So she uh, she dated black guys. She was like Courtney Kalini. She was only dating the black guys. Only maybe. I don't. I I just know that Travis, her ex, was um was black. And so they were like, Travis is a little sketch. It might have been Travis, right? Well, police had already ruled Travis out Travis. Travis doesn't sound like Derek or Eric. Nope. Police ruled out Travis. He was actually in jail at the time of the murder for burglary. Oh, But Jessica. they were like, well, she was fooling around with other guys. Maybe he hired somebody to murder her, like a murder for hire type thing. Which they're giving him a lot of credit, and this is real stretch. Yeah. You know, stretching it. And there was not even phone calls to her or to anybody that would have done anything like that. So yeah. Travis was ruled out. They also blamed Dad because Dad was a mechanic at the sheriff's department before, but he had did prison time for meth. He had her dad, her dad, her biological dad, okay. and so they were like, Dad might have had something to do with it. Maybe he got back in the meth game. Ooh, Dad's name is Derek or Eric. Dad's name is Ben. <laughs> Speaking of dad, two we got two days for the Casey Anthony. Oh, okay. Oh, I was so wrong she's last time. Her dad. Yeah, <laughs> that's my dad. Mm -hmm. Okay, they also said maybe a bad drug deal, or maybe a jealous best friend, like maybe Keisha snapped on her. But you know, Jessica was. A bad drug deal because Jessica was obviously a weed smoker. Mm -hmm. And they were saying that this time of her life was kind of a rough time in her life. Her brother had just got killed in a car accident. Her dad had did some time. For in, meth. For meth, yeah. And um, she was hanging around, not a great crowd. And that some people say that she was selling drugs. Oh, okay, I remember this. Yeah. So she wasn't a she wasn't a gang member. She but wasn't she, a total saint. She was being a teenager right. that was dealing with some things right now. She was 19 years old. Yeah. She didn't get time to even change her life around. I mean, I also yeah. said she could she could hang around some shady people and kind of be a smart mouth and just wouldn't put up with things. But yeah. I'm like Sounds she sounds like a badass to me. Like she got burnt up, she got and exploded. Then she tried to name her captor, and then she stood, lived long enough for her family to be able to come and say their goodbyes. I don't. She was a badass. I don't. I, don't, I can't imagine walk, being on fire, walking around on fire. Yeah, like a fireball. Like she was a fireball. You literally she was a walking a walking fireball. Yeah, zombie fireball. I'll be like. Naked. Just explode me. I don't want to be a walking fireball zombie. So she's the police now. They're like, Ugh, we need to go back to the cell phone records. There has to be something there. So they get with this techie guy, right? Yeah. And this analysis, technical analysis, and they cross the cell phone records, GPS cell phone records, with not just all the Derricks and Eric's, because they're like. Let's not limit ourselves with Derek's or Eric's. I mean, maybe she did say that because it's 50 50. Some people are like, she said Derek and Eric. Some people are like, no, I didn't hear that at all. Because was her face? Her, yeah, burned up. And so yeah, later like, we'll you find can't out. Speak really and well. She had flammable liquid down her throat. So her throat was burned. Her mouth was burned. Her tongue could have been burned. So, yeah. Like, just think about if you go, well, like if you go to the dentist and get. Yeah. You, you can't know, yeah, numb. You can't, you can't move. You can't talk. So they're not going to so. put all their eggs in one basket. Yay for this police department! And so they're like, we're going to cross check GPS s data with everybody that is in this investigation. All so five hundred people in the town. No, <laughs> oh. not all five hundred, but anybody whose names come up. So with parents, with Quentin, with Keisha, with the Derricks and Erics, and mm -hmm. with anybody else that they questioned, yeah. right? So, they do that. And on October 2016, so this is two years later, they find that there was one person in Batesville, that's the town that's five minutes away, 
at the same time as Jessica. They got there at the same time. They were driving on the same road, getting up there and coming back. They left at the same time. So they were basically like the cell phone. Cell phone was like like this. Oh. So they you were you they were either following each other or in the same car. Right? Oh. Guess who this person is? Derek or Eric? Quentin Tillis. Oh wow. I had no <laughs> idea. Remember, he said that after they got high, she dropped him off. Yeah, he said that. She the dropped house. him off and like he did his own thing, right? So he lied. Because oh, here we go. cell phone data don't lie. So they go and they're like, let's go find Quentin Tillis. And they figure out that he is in Monroe, Louisiana, in jail for two charges. What? Charge Okay, and this one. is two years later. So he had gone back to Louisiana. He had gone back to Louisiana. He had gotten married. He was living with a <laughs> woman. He yeah. tried to just do everything. He's to trying to live his life. Innocent. He had stole a credit card from a girl named Ming Ching Sao. She was a foreign exchange student at ULM, University of Louisiana, Monroe. Monroe. Yeah. And what was her name? Ming Chen Sao. Oh, okay. He withdrew $2,000 from her credit card. But the other charge was for the murder of Ming Chen. Sal. She was found stabbed in her apartment 30 plus times and tortured oh gosh. on August 8th in 2016. This was also his wedding day. I was trying to find what? out if he got, yeah, I was trying to find out if he got arrested at his wedding, but I don't think he did. So he was in jail because he pleaded guilty to the credit card abuse because what they had found evidence on him that he had the damn receipts from Ming Chen's credit card and he was on camera what? at Walmart with Ming Chen picking up some prescriptions for a league for like um pain pills. Pain pills? Yeah. So uh he had a friend named Eric. Oh I know. Eric who came to the police department and told the police department that Quentin confessed to slicing and dicing Ming Chen until she gave up her PIN number to her credit card. Then he left her there, and that's how he got the PIN to withdraw $2,000 from and use the credit card or whatever. So here's an Eric. This is the first Eric we've really talked to. Yeah. and But there's no light bulb with the police like, oh, could you be the Eric that? Because they've really already ruled him out. Yeah. So, okay. So, though that's a coincidence, as for what we know now, this Eric has nothing to do with Jessica. Right. So, they go to the jail and they question him about Jessica. And they were like, can you tell us again? We're just re-interviewing everybody. What did you do with Jessica on that day? And so he was like, we went and got high. We went to the store. She dropped me off. And they were like, oh, really? Because we're calling your bullshit because we have your GPS data right here. Uh-huh. Y'all were in Batesville together. Y'all were here together. Y'all were there together. And so he was like, oh, yeah, we did go to the Taco Bell. Oh, And forgot. she ordered a Nacho Bell Grande. Like, he remember what she ordered. And um, we got some food, but I didn't leave with her. My friend Big Mike came, and I left with Big Mike, and me and Big Mike hung out the rest of the but night. But you left your phone in the car, and that's why? Well, he's saying that he was in Batesville with her, and they left at the same time, but he didn't live with her. Mm-hmm. He left with Big, Big Mike. Mike. So maybe they were just on the same highway at the same time. Yeah, maybe. But you can't tell with the CP with the GPS data if they're in the same spots. Yeah. You can just tell they're in the same area. So we wrote, I wrote home with Big Mike and me and my bike um, hung out, right? Okay. Let's talk to Big Mike. Let's go to Big Mike's mm, house. Come on. Big Mike. Um, so, you know, Quentin tells us this. And so Big Mike was like, no, bruh. I was actually at the New York Giants and Tennessee Titans game. I knew it. <laughs> oh, I. I <laughs> Tennessee Titans game 
all day, all night, and I'd spent the night in Nashville, Tennessee, so there's my alibi, and they checked it all out, and so Big Mike was at a Tennessee Titans game. Oh, so you wasn't with Big Mike? Yep. So then they go back to Quentin, and they were like, Quentin, bro, you lied again. Not even a good lie. Not even a good lie. You didn't even call Big Mike and tell Big Mike <laughs> to lie for you. <laughs> <laughs> so now Quentin was like, oh, damn, oh. I forgot. Oh. It wasn't Big Mike. I was with Jessica, and we did go to Batesville together, and I did leave with her How I did leave with her that day. No. Which one part of me is like, he is, this is a, he is a, not a, he's a black guy with a record. Here's this blonde girl. They're going to find out what happened to this blonde girl. So part of me is like, he is lying. The other part of me is like, um, would I forget? Would I forget like, oh, we were at, I left with so-and-so this time or I left with so-and-so this time. Like, is he a liar? Is he a liar or is he forgetting? I think he's forgetting. I mean, I think he's lying. I think you would forget who you left with or at what day you were there. Well, <laughs> if I wasn't involved in something, yeah, I wouldn't know. But if yeah. it was, like, something like the person who I'm connected to has just exploded in a car yeah, and walked like a zombie, I would obviously remember You'd remember your whole day just in case you got questioned. Oh, for sure. I'd have to write that show. <laughs> but yeah, typically I wouldn't. I'm not going to remember like three years ago what, what I was doing on January eighth at yeah. nine p.m. Yes. Like what? That's scary. I used to actually put everything in my calendar because I was scared that somebody would ask me where was I and who was I with. Like I used to journal, like not journal, but I put everything in my calendar in case I needed an alibi. Because I know I wouldn't remember. Mm. I'm not as good as with that right now. Quentin is like, oh, yeah, I forgot. I forgot. I was with Jessica. We went to Batesville. And then we went back to my house. And we were in the driveway. And we hung out in the driveway. And we just talked. And we listened to music. And we, um, she left about 7 o'clock. So the police, remember, he lives across the street from the M&M store. So the M&M camera points right at his house. Oh. So they're like, actually, she did not leave your house at 7 o'clock. She didn't leave until after 7.30. And so you're lying again. And so he was like, oh, okay, well, whatever. I don't know. I can't. I don't know the exact times. I just know we hung out in my car. We talked. We listened to music or whatever, right? As they go through the footage of that whole day, they notice that Quentin changed his clothes three times that day. They saw what he was wearing at his house. They saw what he was wearing in the M&M store. And I think another time they saw him, he was, oh, at Fred's dollar store, he was wearing something different. Hmm. Why are you changing all the time? So part of me is like, if he's getting high, then maybe he's taking showers and changing. The other part of me is like, what is he covering up? Mm-hmm. And this is how jur- This is how the court case. Well, is yeah, going, right? I don't want to like, know. Like, does sides. he do this every day? Change every day? Yeah, Three times is a this day? A, a normal type thing? So, within thirty minutes of him, Jessica leaving Quentin, she's dead, burned alive. And according to cell phone records, she did not come into contact with anybody else. She was found burned alive two miles from his house down Heron Road, right? So they were like, he's a liar. He's good for this. Let's get these keys, take his DNA and get these keys. Remember that Uh they found on the side of the road, got DNA, and the DNA matches. So he's the daddy. (laughs) You to daddy, Quentin. <laughs> you to Your daddy. DNA matches. So they get a search warrant for his phone, and they see that just an hour after Jessica was killed, he deleted, which I don't know how you can see this, every message that him and Jessica corresponded. Every Sounds a little suspicious. And the contact. So your friend just died, and you delete the contact and the messages? That's mm. no. I still have messages from people that I've lost. Because oh yeah, I don't know who's in my them. phone. And then if they die, I'm not just gonna go delete them. <laughs> like, oh, you're dead. Let me delete your contact. Like, <laughs> I don't who need thinks this of anymore? That? Yeah, I don't need this anymore. Maybe it was just really organized. 
Maybe he didn't like clutter. Maybe he's type A. So they get a search for So they find out that he's deleting all that stuff, right? But they also see that every text message that he sent to Jessica was very sexual. Dick pics. I'm horny. Oh. What are you going to do about it? Wow. Trying so to sleep sexual. with her and she would turn him down or distract him or something, you know, like yeah. she wouldn't engage in it. Um, the only one that was even remotely respectful was that last one that I read at the beginning about oh, with Bay. Bay. Yeah, Bay in it. Sorry, we can't hang out, Bay. So mm. he was charged for her murder. Okay. And he went to trial in October of 2017. Say yay. Yay. So at this trial, you probably should have watched this. I trial. know. I didn't start watching trials till like last year. <laughs> so he after this trial, they brought out all his lies. Like how many times they had to go and re-interview him because they caught him in lies and caught him in lies, right? They yeah, but you know what? If you're a liar, doesn't mean you're a murderer. Doesn't mean you're a murderer. And they also had their scenario of what they thought happened. Ooh, what they think? So they took those messages and was like, "He obviously wanted to sleep with her, and she obviously didn't. turned him down." We think because we can put them two together in her car in his driveway, pulled up close, you know, to the shed, like to the back of the house, that. He actually assaulted her in the driveway and got carried away, choked or strangled her to kill her. And he thought that he killed her, but he actually didn't kill her, kill her. So then he's preservation mode, right? Like he's got to dispose of her. Yeah. So he drives her car to Heron Road where it was found on fire. Oh, no, it's itching. <laughs> Where it was found on fire and leaves the car there, takes off because his sister is close to Heron's road, takes off. When he's taken off, he runs to his sister's house, right? And he throws the keys on the side of the road somewhere. And that's how the keys are found on the side of the road. Goes to his sister's house, gets his sister's truck. Why would he throw his keys? Her key, because they're keys to her oh, car. Oh, 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 yeah. oh, yeah. Okay. I guess he doesn't have a car, because he's driving everybody else's car. I mean, like, what? So she's dead. Yeah. He, she's supposedly dead. He throws the keys on the side of the road, parks the car, throws the key. She's dead in the car. She's go He's going to his sister, and he gets his sister's truck, Okay. Then you see him and his sister's truck pulling up at his house across from the M&M store because it's on video. Oh, yeah. Pulls all the way back to the shed. <clears throat> well, they've searched the shed. And in the shed, he has a lot of gas containers. Oh, what are you But he gas? also has a bunch of dirt bikes and, like, four-wheelers. So you need gas. So this is, like, coming out in court, right? Mm -hmm. He has access to gas. So he gets – they're saying that he's getting this gas. And that he uh, goes back to the car, pours the gas all over her, which the seat in the car was laid back, how he described that one time when they had sex. Oh, yeah. So she's laid back in the seat. He pours it on her. At this time, she's just passed out, even though he thinks he, he thinks killed she's her. dead, yeah. He thinks she's dead. She's probably just unconscious. I guess. Unconscious, yeah. right? Well, he sends himself he sends a text to from, her phone yeah, from his phone. And I guess that was his like way of proving that he was not going to be with her. Yeah. Throwing off the police or whatever. So then he lights the car and her on fire, drives to Batesville because remember he's on camera at Fred's dollar store at 8 15 PM Getting the green dot card. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. This was his way of being on camera and having an alibi. But Bates Bill's five minutes down the road. So it could still be done. Yeah. Set her on fire. Do all of this in the amount of time and still be good for it. So then he takes his sister's truck back and then goes home. That is what the prosecution. Uh -huh. That's the story that they said. But they didn't realize that she was not alive. So they think when she felt the fire, 
she got out of the car and took off running but she was running the wrong she was running towards the woods and not towards the street or anywhere probably because she couldn't see she was on fire yeah um and okay so that's the story right Mm -hmm. so the defense is in trial and they're like why are we even here she named her killer her killer is Derek or Eric this is Quentin you can hold your tongue you can cut your tongue off Quentin will never sound like Derek Quentin will never sound like Eric why are we here? <laughs> oh, shit. Prosecution brought up a doctor, a burn professional doctor, whatever that's called. And he was like, there's no way she could speak intelligibly, like yeah. appropriately with the wounds and the burns and the trauma that she had gone through, plus the trauma down her throat. So she could not have she might it might have sound like Derek but she very well could have been saying something else yeah like Quentin <laughs> <laughs> or they were saying like tell us she could have been she could have tried to say tell us but couldn't say the T so uh us and maybe they heard Eric because that's Quentin's last name it's tell us oh either way I thought you meant tell us like okay Quentin Tellis was his last yeah. name. So Ugh. they try to bring somebody on the stand to try to like get that reasonable doubt out of people's minds. Mm-hmm. But what got me on this part is they knew that she said Jessica Chambers. They knew that she said he set me on fire. He did it. They knew that she said, I'm wa- I want water. I'm thirsty. I want water. Right? Yeah. All that she, they heard. So you just misheard Derek or Eric? I don't know. So that's the only I thing. Don't know. That's the only thing that would make me have a reasonable doubt if I was in the jury. And obviously other people in the jury thought so too. Oh no. Because they went and deliberated and I tried to find out for how long they deliberated, but when they came back, they find him not guilty of capital murder. But first, the ju- the judge is like, has everybody made a unanimous decision? And the foreman was like, yes. Okay. And he goes, okay. And some random juror was like, I didn't. Oh, I don't agree. And so the judge was like, wait, what do you mean? He what? goes, I don't think he's not guilty. I think he's guilty. So the juror, the, the judge Ooh. was like, go back into the chambers. <laughs> And blown up. Everybody, do you know the definition of unanimous? Unanimous to me is like they were they did not understand the rules. Oh is what they later jury said. instructions. Yes. Even though they're said over and over and over and over and over. They did not understand. I guess they thought it was like majority wins. <laughs> I don't know. So they go back and they deliberate for another hour and a half and they're deadlocked and they come back and the trial was Hung. Hung jury. Oh, hell. That's Deadlocked. the worst. That's the worst. Granted a mistrial. They go <sighs> back to trial September of 2018. Deadlocked again. <laughs> so luckily, Quentin's in jail. Still. In Louisiana for, for the credit card thing. Ming Sung. Yep. But... He's also waiting trial for the murder of Ming Chen. Yeah. And there could possibly be a third trial for the Jessica Chambers. Possibly. Possibly. Don't get me all excited. Yeah. So on October 22nd, 2022, so just the other day, he was supposed to stand trial for Ming Chen. But that witness, Eric, who came and said Mm -hmm. that Quentin confessed, He's now saying that the police coerced him and bribed him to say oh. that. So now there's no evidence that he was there for the murder, that he was just has the credit card, and he may not go on trial for Ming Chen's murder. And as of right now, so on November 2nd, 
the indictment for the murder was dismissed. And I don't know if that means dismissed indefinitely for Ming Chen or if that is like until we're not going to do anything until he serves his full sentence for the credit card abuse, which is like 10 or 15 years. So as of right now, the prosecution for the Jessica Chambers has not set a new trial date and they have not said whether they are going to go back to court for the third time to get her justice. I'm going to need them to come up with some new evidence. We need some new evidence. Yeah. Because it'll be the same thing. It, yeah. They like you can't, you gotta, you gotta have some new evidence. They even took the trial. F- I think it was like four or five hours outside of to get the town. prejudice or whatever. Yeah. Um, and then I believe it was a year and a half ago, Jessica Chambers' mom died. So she is not, she will not be here. If there is a third trial, even though she promised justice. Oh, the worst. Uh, That is the worst. OMG. I wasn't sure if there was an update. I've heard this story a long, long time ago. Mm -hmm. And I knew this girl got burned on fire and she was walking and it was awful. It was awful. Awful, awful, awful. So there's a couple documentaries that. One's called Burned Alive. I think that's on Investigation Discovery. And then there is the the um, Disappearance. It's a five-part. No, yeah, Unspeakable I've... Crimes, The Killing of Jessica Chambers. There's a podcast on it. And Oxygen did a podcast on it. And then Oxygen did a actual documentary, five parts. And it's so much more information, but I try to get all the good stuff and wrap it up in a nice little bow and in an, under an hour for you guys. So yes. Mississippi people, I hope I did your big time, your one of your major murders in your towns, mm. some justice. Terrible. It is terrible. Um, speaking of a new trial. Okay. Oh. You awesome. know. Austin Harris, I just saw and I sent it to you, is going to trial uh, starting this week, I believe. It's what, Monday? And that's the guy who you did the story on. It the was College uh, Cannibal. College Cannibal is like episode like 63 or something. I posted it. Where he thought um, he was a dog. Yes. He, ate he the neighbor. drank the bleach or whatever yeah. and like went crazy. I don't know. Like, I don't know. Opening statements start on Monday morning. That's, oh my goodness, that's, but there's no jury four days ago. So it's basically (laughs) the judge is going to make the ruling. Is that what happens when there's no jury? I don't know. It says bench trial, no jury. I don't know what that means. Well, you should be the pro. I should be. I've never watched a bench trial, so I don't know what to think about that. Like, I think it's a sad story either way. Like he's either going to be in jail, which I don't know if that's his appropriate place. I do think he should probably be in a mental institution. I know. It's just so sad that, oh, it's just sad. I think it's also sad that Quentin Tillis could be free when his sentence is up if we don't go back to trial for Jessica Chambers and if they don't try for Ming Chin. He could go free. Wait, do you think he did it? Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Um, And the fact that they couldn't, there's not one other good suspect. And you'd have to like have a real crazy I scenario mean, yeah, to think he to do didn't that. Do now, could he have had help? Yeah. They did say that um, his sister, whose truck he got, has a tattoo of Derek on her arm. So who's Derek? Then he has that friend named Eric. And so, could there be a possibility that somebody else helped him? Maybe. <sighs> Why didn't she just say Quentin? What if it wasn't Quentin? I don't know. Oh. And that's what people are saying. If she could say Derek and Eric, if she could say I'm thirsty, if she could say water. I know. Why didn't she say Quentin did this to me? I don't know. I, I know. I don't know what I would say, guilty or not guilty. I'd have to hear all this stuff. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, y'all. Woo! That is it. That was a good one. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. stuff. We will see y'all next week for another story. Keep updated. Um, we're gonna we, you know, when it's gonna be December. 
Oh my gosh, is it? Is it November 27th? It is. Yeah, it's going to be December by the time we do our next story. So we need to figure out, do we want to recognize any holidays or do we want to keep doing what we're doing? Oh, like do themes? Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. Mm, we'll see. Y'all go rate, review, and subscribe. Yep. Follow us. Instagram, Facebook. Those are the best places to follow us. Yeah. We drank on some Trulies today. If you want to buy a round for next week, you can Venmo at Bloody Happy Hour. Or Cash App. Or Cash App. Bloody Happy Hour. Dollar Sign. Bloody Dollar Sign. Bloody Happy Hour. Right over you subscribe. Yeah. And don't forget to stay aware. Stay alive. And always be DTF. Just like Mississippi. the Mississippi Police Department. Police Department and the Moscow Police Department because they are DTF. Okay. Bye. This has been a Rogue Media Podcast. Bye.